So let's consider what happens with a jump instruction. Um, in this example here, there is a bit of code here that's not doing much. It's just uh, code that will um, that shows a few instructions, a few ads here, and then there's a jump to L1, and it just continues to to do this. So how is that encoded as a 32-bit instruction? So jump clearly is jumping to an address. An address is a 32-bit value, but an instruction is merely a 32-bit value. So somehow we need to embed or encode the instructions for jumping to a 32-bit address, even though we only have 32 bits to work with to represent that jump. So when you encode, when you watch this encode it, so that's a jump to L1. Um, we're sitting here looking at line 13 then, and line 13 is a jump to L1. That is what the source code shows. Jump to L1. And then over here it says jump to address 0, 0, 004. 0, 0, 0, 0, 008. And that is, in fact, where L1 is located. That instruction um, is at the um, address 8. I'm just going to use the last uh, couple of values here. So 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 32, and so forth. So that jump L1 jumps up to 4. So I, I move from this um, hex 18 or decimal um, 34 over to 4. So how do we embed that instruction? Well, we see that the jump is a basic instruction, so it can be uh, embedded as a 32 or included as a 32-bit word. So let's talk a little bit about how we encode that. So let's say that our jump is encoded and we see it as um, hex 0810004. Now, um, I know from having looked at this before that it jumps to a particular address, 0040010010. But how is this address that we see here, how is that included there? So how is that value, that address, included? That's what we want to explore. So if you're given this instruction with the hex 0810, etc., the first thing you'd want to do is convert it to binary. If you want to make sense of this to see what it's doing, you'd see then that our 0 here shows up as 4 bits there. Our 8 shows up as 4 bits there. Our 1 shows up as 4 bits there. Then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, so 4 groups of 4, and then finally we get to the end, and we have our 4 there. So that far, that much makes sense. Again, we have our 0, 8, and let's pretend we're trying to figure out what this instruction is. So what we do know is that we're going to take the first six bits to get the opcode. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those first six bits tell us that the opcode is zero, two, or a hex zero, two. If you look that up on the green sheet, that's simply going to be a jump instruction. So we know that much. Now, how is it that the rest of our data ends up turning into um, a jump address, right? How does it end up turning into the 004, etc.? So the process for doing this is that since all of our addresses are on word boundaries, such as 4, 8, 12, 16, all of those um, addresses will have 
two zeros placed in there so there's no need to include those it's kind of like um boundaries of two to the second power or boundaries of maybe 10 to the second power if you were thinking base 10 right they would always be 100 200 300 400 500 well it's very similar we don't need to include these two zeros because it will always be zero zero in the least significant bit so when decoding this to make sense of the address we will have to um, place those two bits in and then from here we can start to make sense of the address that's been embedded here so from here we can then look at this and we'll say that this is a zero this one is a one a zero 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 there's a four and then there's a zero so that looks a lot like the address that it decodes or that it kind of um, represents, except that we're missing four bits there. So essentially that address, once you drop in the last two zeros, we have decoded it. Now, our instructions, our .txt instructions, um, at this point, I, most everything that we've seen would have a zero um, to indicate or would be located at uh, somewhere in this vicinity zero zero four so the way we decode this is that it's based on the current value of the program counter so if our instruction that we're looking at currently resides where the first four bits are zero 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 right then we're just going to go ahead then and include that so it all depends on where your instruction resides the current program counter determines then what this is now it's for mostly everything that we see you can expect just to place a zero there but um, there is another instruction or another consideration um, where that's not the case I'll come to that in one second but the jump instruction looks like this where it says the opcode which we've seen and then the address well this ADDRESS is partial it's a partial address um, what we do is we go ahead and add two zero bits concatenate to that the address and that's what we've seen here concatenated on and then we take the program counter and the four bits right we take the four bits from the current program counter and use that and concatenate that on to complete the actual jump address let's look at uh, this one here so given that a MIPS jump instruction is not located maybe instead of dot text but in the kernel so if you need to handle exceptions that code um, typically goes into a, a different area so that's where you will see the four upper bits then starting um, with something like this so instead of zero 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 it could be one zero 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 now what we're going to do then is that if we see that a jump instruction has been encoded and knowing that that instruction sits here we can decode it so what it requires is that we um, turn into binary the zero the eight all the way through until we get to the four strip off the most significant bits and attach two zeros at the end and then make sure that our top most significant four most significant bits um, are in, represent an eight so it would be a one zero 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 So our instruction then 
um, looks like this. We have our 0. We have our 8. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. All right, and then we have a 4 that would come in after that. All right, and then let me kind of clean this up a little bit. I don't have any eraser since this is an image here. But that's what we have. Now we have our 4, 1, 2, 4. So then what we're going to do is we know that to figure out what this address is, we have that those two bits there that are added and then that is our first nibble and then one two three four our second nibble so there's a zero there's a one and then if you complete that now that if we you know now that that's completed we have an address um, this here, remember, was our opcode. Those six bits there formed the opcode. So that opcode is just a 0, 2. So what we have is an address where there's a 0, a 0, a 0, a 0, and a 1 and a 0. So how many nibbles do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And to make a full 32-bit address, we need four more bits. And so what we're going to do is look at what, what the current program counter is, and there's an 8. So that value of 8 then forms and completes our, our address. So it's a hex 8 with five zeros and then a 1, 0. That's how we can figure out what this instruction is encoded um, to represent and so that's the address to which it would jump next so it's based on us looking at the current program counter and so when it's not a dot txt but a k text the um, that places it into its a different area of memory so that it's not the conventional or common or frequently seen hex 004 but it's a hex 8 with the following nibbles to come after that. So that's how we encode a jump instruction.